Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Chua. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist with Puente Hills Eye Care. And in this video, I'll review the best natural treatments for dry eye. I'll be talking about changes you can make to your environment, your lifestyle, and your diet. And stick around until the end of the video because I'll also go through some expensive natural treatments that have been marketed to improve dry eye symptoms, but really aren't worth your time or your money. Now, the recommendations I'll mention here have been backed by decades of clinical research. Throughout this video, I'm going to show you these studies and these results. I don't want you to just take my word for these recommendations. I want you to see the data and the research so you can decide for yourself which treatments make the most sense for you. So let's get into it. The first treatment I'll talk about is paying attention to your screen time. We are relying more and more on our devices such as TVs, phones, and computers. I mean, you're watching this video on a screen right now. And this increased dependence on the internet, phones, and computers has led to a rise in the prevalence of dry eye symptoms. In this study, published in the journal Ophthalmology, a research team from Tokyo studied 3,549 office workers and found that people who spent four or more hours of screen time had a 68% increase in the odds of having dry eye disease. And unfortunately, recent research has also shown that kids are spending more time on screens and are suffering from dry eye disease at higher rates than ever before. One study from Korea studied 916 school-aged children and found that children with dry eye disease spent on average 3.2 hours on smartphones per day compared with only 0.6 hours in kids who didn't have dry eye disease. So on average, kids who had clinical signs and symptoms of dry eye were spending two and a half more hours each day staring at smartphones compared to children who didn't have dry eye. Now, what's the reason for screen time causing dry eye? It comes down to blink rate. Every time we blink our eyes, our eyelids help to spread a layer of tears over our cornea. If our eyes stay open for a long period of time, the tear film breaks down and evaporates, leaving our cornea exposed and vulnerable to surface breakdown. One study from the New England Journal of Medicine found that when we're resting or relaxing, our average blink rate is about 22 blinks a minute. While reading books, it's about 10 times per minute. And while reading text on a video screen, it drops down to about seven times a minute. Another study found that in subjects who are using screens to do tasks or work, their blink rate decreased down to five times a minute. And that intuitively makes sense. The more focused we are on what we're looking at, the more our eyes are glued to our screens and the more we forget to blink. When you're only blinking five times a minute instead of about 20 times a minute like you should be, it's only natural that your tear film will break down and cause damage to your cornea after several hours. So what are the natural ways we can treat dry eyes, especially if increased screen time is contributing? Blink breaks. You have to be deliberate about getting good quality blinks in because it's really easy, it's human nature actually, to forget to blink when you're watching something on a screen or concentrating on a visually demanding task. One tip ophthalmologists recommend is the 20-20-20 rule. That is, every 20 minutes, take a 20 second blink break and stare out into the distance on an object about 20 feet away. Those blinks will help restore your tear film and protect your eyes from dryness. The next natural treatment for dry that I'll talk about is moisture chamber glasses and goggles. So what are moisture chamber glasses? Moisture chamber glasses basically have these silicone or foam eye cups that hug the skin around the eye, forming a nice little insulated chamber, which helps to prevent your tears from evaporating and helps your eyes retain their moisture. Have you ever noticed when you're boiling a pot of water after you put a lid on it, all that steam stays inside the pot, keeping the inside nice and moist instead of evaporating into the air? That's basically what these moisture glasses are. They're kind of like pot lids for your eyes. The eye cups also block out wind and other airborne irritants like dust and pollen. The tricky thing with these moisture chamber glasses is that it's all about the fit. You want to have a nice 360 degree seal between the eye cup and your face to make sure that they'll work correctly. Multiple research studies have investigated the effectiveness of moisture chamber glasses and they've all reached pretty similar conclusions. That is, well-fitting moisture chamber glasses help improve tear film stability and blink rates, and most importantly, decrease the symptoms of dry eye disease. And before I mention any products, for full disclosure, I have zero financial relationship with any of the products that I'll be mentioning in this video. No one is paying me money, no money is changing hands, none of these companies even know who I am. These are just products that have either helped me or my patients, and I figured they might be good to share with you as well. One of the more popular moisture glasses manufacturers that I've found is Zienna. They make a range of styles of glasses with different fits. They do clear glasses and sunglasses, and you can also have them make glasses with your prescription as well. They have great reviews online, but the downside is that their glasses are pricey. 
Their moisture chamber glasses start at $180, and after you choose different lens options, you can be looking at over $200 just for one pair of glasses. So if you're looking for cheaper alternatives, there are several options on Amazon, but I noticed that they have more mixed reviews. If you think moisture chamber glasses or goggles might look a little bit too strange, or maybe they're too cumbersome, at the very least, you can get a good pair of wraparound sunglasses to help protect your eyes from the sunlight, wind, and other irritants in the air. They won't work as well as moisture goggles or glasses because they don't form a seal around your eyes, but you'll still get a lot of the benefits of the added eye protection without the bulk and the cost of moisture chamber glasses. The next thing you can do to treat your dry eye naturally is to raise the humidity in your environment. Several research studies have found that there is a strong association between dry environments and dry eye disease. In this study out of Korea, researchers followed 352 employees who worked in a clean room. Now, the environment and the clean rooms, including air temperature, humidity, and ventilation, all have to be perfectly controlled because that's where things like sterile medical supplies are manufactured and assembled. So these clean rooms had relative humidity measurements of less than 1%, super dry. So in this study, researchers followed employees who worked in these dry environments and found that 14.8% of employees had dry eye disease after working there for one year, 27.1% after working there for two years, and 32.8% of employees had developed dry eye after working there for three years. So the longer that employees worked in this dry environment, more and more of them developed dry eye disease. The researchers also found that the longer employees worked in these dry clean rooms, that their dry eye disease would become more severe with more damage to their cornea on clinical exam and reported increased severity in their symptoms. So this study kind of shows that your environment plays a key role in your dry eye disease. I know this is kind of an extreme example, right? Like working in a clean room with 1% humidity is not the same as probably where you're sitting right now, but you can extrapolate these findings from the study to other environments, particularly if you live in a dry climate like maybe the southwestern United States or if you're spending more time inside where the heat might be running and drying everything out. In this study, researchers followed thousands of dry eye patients throughout the United States to see whether their environment had an association with the severity of their dry eye. They found that patients who lived in climates with lower humidity on average had significantly more severe clinical signs and symptoms of dry eye compared to patients who live in climates with higher humidity. So how can we use this data to guide recommendations for naturally treating dry eye? Well, I'd recommend to optimize your environment by using a good quality humidifier. This is especially important if you live in desert environments or if you're spending time indoors with an indoor heater because that's where you'll be exposed to drier conditions. So it would be a good idea to set up a humidifier in your bedroom or maybe your work desk so that you can raise the humidity in your immediate area and therefore create an environment that promotes a healthier tear film and cornea. Along these same lines of modifying your environment to avoid tear evaporation, if you're in the car or in an airplane or if your bed or couch is near an air vent, make sure that the air vent is not pointing directly towards your face or your eyes. That constant stream of air can dry out your eyes and make your symptoms worse. Okay, the next natural treatment I'll discuss for dry eye is warm compress. You might have heard that warm compress is good for your dry eyes. And that's true. Warm compresses are a wonderful, effective treatment for dry eye disease. But that's with a caveat. The heat needs to be applied correctly. The problem with warm compress is that there is so much variation in how the heat is applied. Some patients use face towels, tea bags, boiled eggs, or maybe rice in a sock. Some people use warm compress for 2 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, or 30 minutes. Some people do it once a day, twice a day, or 6 times a day. So it's no wonder, given the inconsistency at which people actually use warm compress, that there's a huge variation in the actual results and relief that people get. So in order to better help my dry eye patients, I did a deep dive into the medical literature so I can come up with some guidelines on how you can optimize your warm compress regimen to get maximum dry eye relief. Let's first understand how and why warm compress is a great natural treatment for dry eye. Our tears aren't just made up of water. They're complex mixtures of minerals, vitamins, and lipids, which all serve an important function to lubricate the eye, as well as to provide nutrition and protection for the cornea. The oil in our tears come from small glands in the eyelids called meibomian glands. These glands release oil, which is called meibom, into the tears, and it helps prevent tears from evaporating. Sometimes though, these glands can get clogged or blocked. The glands are unable to release their oily secretions. If these glands become blocked, then there's decreased oil in the tear film, causing tears to evaporate quickly, leaving the cornea 
exposed and vulnerable to damage. Poorly functioning meibomian glands are extremely common in patients with dry eye. One study found that 86% of patients with dry eye disease have a component of meibomian gland dysfunction. And warm compress is truly one of the only effective ways to rejuvenate and improve meibomian gland function. At this point, there are dozens of studies which have all shown that eyelid warm compresses significantly improve signs and symptoms of dry eye. But in order for warm compress to work, it needs to be done correctly. So let's go through the studies and let's design an optimized warm compress regimen. The first component we'll discuss is temperature. So remember, the meibomian gland releases oily secretions called meibom. And a good way to conceptualize meibom is to think of it kind of like butter. They're both made up mostly of lipids or fat, and their physical properties are heavily dependent on their temperature. For example, Butter at cold temperatures acts more like a solid, but as its temperature increases, it starts to soften and liquefy and act more like a liquid. And that's exactly what happens with meibom as well. In this study from 2004, researchers measured meibomian gland secretions at different temperatures. They found that increasing the temperature of the meibomian glands significantly increased the amount of oil release from the glands into the tear film. That increased oil in our tears helps to keep our tears from evaporating providing more protection for our corneas. But what temperature should we be aiming for? In this study from 2019, a scientist collected meibom from research subjects and heated the samples up to different temperatures to find the melting point of meibom. He found that the temperature needed to melt 90% of meibom was 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's our target. We need to be able to warm our upper and lower eyelids to a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit to melt our meibom so that it can be released by our meibomian glands to protect our eyes. And that's why I generally don't recommend patients use a warm face towel as warm compress. You can get the face towel warm enough with hot water, but as the water evaporates, the towel cools down very quickly over the course of seconds to minutes. So to get the optimal temperature, you would constantly have to be running the towel in warm water to heat it up, then applying it to your eyelids, then running the towel in warm water again to heat it back up after it cools down, then you have to apply it again. I mean, it takes a lot of work to be done correctly. We also have to consider the safety of these high temperatures. Obviously, we want to get these glands hot enough to liquefy the meibom, but we don't want to heat the eyelid skin too much because that might cause burns. This study analyzed what temperatures were required to cause skin burns. They found that temperatures of 44 degrees Celsius or 111 degrees Fahrenheit applied to the skin for six hours caused epidermal injury. 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit, it took about three hours to start seeing skin injury. So for safety, 44 to 45 degrees Celsius or 111 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit is the upper limit of the temperature we would want to apply to our skin. So we figured out the ideal temperature, but what about time? When we think about the heat energy we're applying to our meibomian glands, we have to think about how long we should be applying the heat. In this study, Research subjects used a warm compress heated to 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit for different time periods. They found that on average, it took about 25 minutes to increase the temperature of the inner eyelid to reach our target temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. And that makes sense. If we think about cooking as an example, if we put a piece of fish or steak in the oven, that outside part or the skin might heat up quickly but it takes time for the center piece of the meat to come up to the proper temperature. Now, my bombing glands are also in the center of our eyelids. So we need to make sure we apply this heat long enough to give the heat a chance to penetrate deeper into our eyelids into the meibomian glands. Given these findings, I'd recommend warm compress length of about 20 to 25 minutes to give our warm compresses enough time to increase the temperature of our meibomian glands so that the oil inside can properly melt. Okay, so now we know we want 44 to 45 degrees Celsius or 111 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit degree warm compresses applied for about 20 minutes. How often should we be applying them? Well, after doing a deep dive into the literature, I wasn't able to find any studies that definitively answered that question. Most studies on warm compress and meibomian gland dysfunction had research subjects use the warm compress either once or twice a day. But there were no good quality studies comparing, say, once a day versus twice a day, or maybe even four or five times a day to see if there was any significant effect of frequency on dry eye relief. Since many of the studies showed significant improvement in dry eye with both once and twice daily usage, that's exactly what I recommend to patients. About once or twice a day as your schedule allows. I understand my patients have busy schedules, so if they can't fit in two warm compress sessions per day, that's fine. Once a day will provide relief as well. So there we have it. 
We want 44 to 45 degrees Celsius or 111 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit warm compresses applied for 20 minutes at least once a day. But how do we do it? We showed before that warm towels just aren't going to cut it. So I'm going to test two different ways to see which one works best. Okay, so we're going to run our experiment. I have this generic gel bead warm compress. You put it in the microwave for a few seconds, it gets hot. I recommended it in some of my pre previous videos. Um, and I think they work pretty well. The other product I have, this is called the Aroma Season Eyelid Warm Compress. I found it off Amazon, it got really good reviews. Bought it with my own money. Full disclosure again, I have no financial relationship with this company. They don't know who I am. I don't know who they are. A Roman season is kind of a weird name, but I'm looking forward to trying this. I actually think it might work pretty well. So our goals are we want our warm, warm compress to be about 44 to 45 degrees Celsius. And we want our eyelid temperature to hit about 40 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to be using both of these different methods. I'm going to be measuring my eyelid temperature at zero minutes, at 10 minutes, and after 20 minutes to see if we can get the eyelid temperature to that perfect 40 degrees Celsius to help um, melt our mybum. This is a, a pizza oven thermometer. I actually got it as a wedding gift from one of my groomsmen. Thank you, Kevin. Um, yeah, it's for our pizza ovens, but I think it'll work fine for our experiment. So let's start. We're going to use this uh, gel bead compress first. I'm going to put it in the microwave for 15 seconds, and then we're going to use this warm compress for 20 minutes. So it's the gel bead compress has been in the microwave for 15 seconds. I'm going to check the temperature. It's 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So... That's a little bit too hot for our liking because as we mentioned in the earlier video, we want, we want that temperature to be about 111 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So and let me feel, yeah, that's pretty hot to the touch, but we're going to try it. We're going to put it on for 20 minutes, see if I can do this without burning myself. I might need to use a little paper towel to make sure that I don't burn my eyelid. So I'm going to put this on for about 20 minutes and let's see how we do. Set timer for 20 minutes. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and check the temperature of my eye here. Okay. About 98.5 degrees at 10 minutes. My warm compress is about 98 degrees, so it's really not doing any more heating for me. I'm gonna put it back in the microwave so we can do it for another 10 minutes. Okay, so I just cooked it for another 15 seconds. Our temperature is, can you see that? Um, that's freaking hot. It's about 160 degrees. That's just too hot to safely put on my face, so gonna have to wrap it for now until it cools down and then we're gonna try it for another 10 minutes and we're gonna see how this works oh it's hot set timer for 10 minutes 10 minutes counting down okay so it's been 20 minutes I just finished. Let's see how it turned out. Okay. So we were able to reach an eyelid temperature of 102.3 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a few degrees lower than our goal temperature of 105 degrees Fahrenheit, but pretty close. Uh, let's see the temperature of the warm compress. It's running about 123.6 right now. The problem with the gel bead warm compress though, so after I heated it up the first time for 15 seconds, I got it to about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And then after 10 minutes, it had cooled down to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So I put it back in the microwave for 15 seconds and then that increased the temperature of the warm compress up to about 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And that was just 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And that was just too hot. And so 
I had to wrap it in a paper towel because the second I put a 160 degree compress on my eyelid, I immediately felt that it was like dangerously hot. So I wrapped it in a paper towel, then I put it on. And then, yeah, after the second 10 minutes, it felt a lot more comfortable and I felt that it was a lot more effective. But the way I applied the heat, it was a little bit inconsistent um, with the temperature of the warm compress ranging throughout the entire 20 minutes. So we're going to try this experiment again with the Aroma Season uh, warm compress and see if we can get a little bit more of a consistent result. Okay, so we're going to try the Aroma Season warm compress. I basically just plugged it in. I turned it on. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to check my eyelid temperature here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, it's reading 91.8 degrees. I don't know. I guess I'm running a little bit cold right now. Okay. And let's check the temperature on this warm compress to start. So it's about 112 degrees, which is right in that window that we want to be applying our warm compress. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this first for 10 minutes. We're going to see how my eyelid temperature is. And then we're going to do it for another 10 minutes for a total of 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. So it's been 10 minutes uh, with the Aroma Season Warm Compress. And let's see. Let's see what my temperature is. What is that? 98.7? Yeah, about 98. It's about 98.7, which is actually pretty similar to what the gel bead compress temperature was uh, after 10 minutes. So I'm going to put it on for another 10 minutes and see what temperature we can get. Set timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, counting down. Okay, so it's been the full 20 minutes. Let's see what my temperature is. One oh four point nine. Pretty good. I mean, that's exactly the target temperature, almost exactly the target temperature we want as well. So pretty good. Okay, so I use both warm compresses. My eyes are super watery. My eyelids are pretty red and hot now. And the uh, aroma, aroma therapy, aroma season electrical warm compress. I was able to get my eyelids to the proper temperature of 105 degrees Fahrenheit. I forgot to mention I was using the high setting on this aroma season uh, device. But in terms of ease of use and consistency, this electrical warm compress is hands down the better option. I mean, you just plug it in. Again, you put on the high setting and gets you to that 112 degrees Fahrenheit that we want. And after about 20 minutes, it'll heat up your eyelids to the 105 degrees Fahrenheit that we're looking for. With the gel bead compress, I mean, you put in the microwave, it can range anywhere from 130 to 160 degrees. If it's too hot, you have to wrap it in a towel just to safely put it in, on your eyelid. So yeah, going forward, I definitely recommend one of these uh, electric warm compress devices that you can find on Amazon. I think the temperatures in this warm compress are the correct ones to get our eyelids to the correct temperature to melt the mybum. But if you're using this device or any warm compress and if it's feeling, I mean, past the point of uncomfortable, if it's starting to hurt, definitely just back off and try again a different time or see if you can get used to it because, you know, you obviously don't want to risk any damage to your eyelid skin uh, by applying too much heat. Okay, the last part of an optimized warm compress regimen is gland expression. Now that we have the heat properly applied and our mybum is liquefied, we also want to think about how we can help clear out our meibomian glands so they can continue to flow properly. Expensive office treatments like Lipoflow use a combination of heat as well as gentle mechanical squeezing to push out all the meibomian gland secretions. We can also do our own version of gentle eyelid massage at home after doing warm compress to help express any meibom from our glands. This one helps lubricate our eyes and two, make sure that there are no clogs in our glands to prevent them from flowing properly. So let's go over the absolute best way to do it. First, 
Immediately after finishing your warm compress, do a few really good strong blinks. When you squeeze the muscles around your eyelids, the orbicularis muscles, these muscle fibers help naturally push out the oil from your meibomian glands. After you perform some good blinks, we'll use our hands and fingers to manually express our glands. First, wash your hands with soap and water, then dry them. Then you want to use your non-dominant hand to apply counter traction at your eyebrow. You want to feel the bone here. If you're not anchoring your eyelid skin to your bony brow, then your skin will just kind of flop around as you massage it. So you want to make sure that you're using your non-dominant hand and anchoring your skin here at the eyebrow. Then you want to use your pointer finger from your dominant hand to push down gently along your glands. The key is you don't want to be pushing inwards towards your eyeball. You want to be gliding up to down along the glands to help express any of the oil from them. And you want to start at one side, maybe the side towards your ear, and then you could slowly work your way towards the side of your nose. And you want to do that a few times, maybe three to five times all the way across. After you finish the upper eyelid, you could repeat the same for your lower eyelid. You want to just kind of anchor your skin along the upper cheek, the bottom part of your orbital bone right here. And then you can use the pointer finger from your other hand to just gently go along your lower eyelid from down to up along the glands. And again, you could start from one side, maybe the side closer to your ear, and then you go towards the side closer to your nose. And you can just go from one side to the other about three to five times. This method of applying optimum heat to raise your meibomian glands to the magic temperature of 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, followed by gentle massage and gland expression, you're basically doing the same treatment at home as you would get by spending $750 for a lipoflow or tear care treatment in an eye doctor's office. So there you have it. We just discovered the absolute best warm compress therapy regimen that you can do at home. I think we should come up with a name for it. Comment below what you think we should call our warm compress method. I think I like slow cooker warm compress. Okay, beyond blink breaks, moisture goggles, humidifiers and warm compress, what are the other natural treatments out there for dry eye? The next natural treatment I'll discuss for dry eye are omega-3 fatty acid supplements. Most people refer to these supplements as fish oil. Now, I'll say this right off the bat. The data regarding omega-3s for the treatment of dry eye is mushy at best. Yes, that's a technical term. There have been a few studies which have shown that fish oil can improve dry eye disease. In fact, I reviewed these earlier studies when I made my original video on the best treatments for dry eye and recommended fish oil to help patients treat their dry eye symptoms. The results from more recent studies and better quality randomized control trials, such as this study from the New England Journal of Medicine, suggests that there might not be any benefit from using fish oil for the treatment of dry eye. In this study, researchers followed 499 research subjects who had moderate to severe dry eye. They randomized these research subjects into two groups. The study group received 3,000 milligrams of fish-derived omega-3 fatty acid supplements daily, while the control group received an olive oil placebo. Researchers followed these two groups for 12 months and recorded each patient's symptoms and clinical exams. And after 12 months, the investigators didn't see any significant differences between the fish oil group and the placebo group in terms of dry eye symptoms or in their eye exams. In their conclusion, they wrote, we found no evidence of a beneficial effect of omega-3 fatty acid supplements as compared with placebo supplements among patients with dry eye disease. Okay, that may be just one study's results, but what if we zoomed out and looked at all the other studies on omega-3 supplementation? In this Cochrane review, researchers reviewed all the previous randomized control trials which investigated the use of omega-3 fatty acids and dry eye disease. They included 34 randomized control trials, which looked at a total of 4,314 participants from 13 countries. After tallying all the results together, their ultimate conclusion was that the evidence is uncertain and inconsistent. So although I originally recommended omega-3 fish oil for dry eye treatment a few years ago, these recommendations were based mostly on older observational studies, which is what we had at the time. But my thinking has been changed by these newer studies, which are higher quality randomized control trials with more research subjects and longer follow-up time periods. Given the current evidence out there in 2022, I no longer recommend fish oil for the treatment of dry eye. Although fish oil may have health benefits for other conditions besides dry eye, I don't think it would make a significant effect for most dry eye sufferers. I say this with a caveat. 
I have had multiple patients who've told me that they had huge improvements in their dry eye symptoms with omega-3 supplements. What I tell them is, look, if it works for you, that's great. Continue to use it. There really haven't been any reports of dangerous side effects from these supplements at normal doses besides burps that taste like fish. So I don't think they're dangerous to use. And you have to remember these medical studies that we read, they look at thousands of patients and then pull up all the results to find the average effect. It's entirely possible that fish oil maybe helped some people while it didn't really help other people. It's also possible that if you tried fish oil, you might fall into the group that actually received some benefit. My thought though is, if I'm going to make recommendations on natural treatments for dry eye, I understand that I'm asking you to spend your time and your money on these treatments. So I'm just gonna do my best to take all the data that we have and recommend the treatments with the most evidence supporting it for the largest percent of people so that you get the most bang for your buck. So for me, I'd rather recommend other treatments like warm compress and artificial tears rather than fish oil because I think those would make a bigger difference. Going beyond omega-3 supplements, various companies and manufacturers have introduced several other products such as blue blocking glasses, berry extract supplements, and carotenoid supplements as possible ways to treat digital eye strain and dry eye. Well, a new study published in May 2022 in the journal Ophthalmology reviewed all the previous literature investing multifocal lenses, blue blocking glasses, oral berry extract supplements, oral carotenoid supplements, and oral omega-3 supplements on digital eye strain and dry eye. After adding up all the studies, they concluded that there was no high certainty evidence supporting the use of any of these products to help with digital eye strain. So I'd recommend not to spend your money on these particular products with the hope of them helping with your eye strain or dry eye because chances are they won't do you much good. So that was a whirlwind review of natural dry eye treatments. In summary, the best natural treatments I recommend for dry eye are frequent blink breaks. Remember the 20-20-20 rule. Moisture chamber glasses or goggles or wraparound glasses and sunglasses. When I use a humidifier and be extra mindful of dry environments, for example, if you work or read in front of an air vent or if you live in a desert climate or if you're inside with the heat on. You want to use our optimized warm compress regimen using a constant 44 to 45 degrees Celsius or 111 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit warm compress at least once daily to heat up your glands to that magic 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degree Fahrenheit temperature. Then finish it off with some good strong blinks and a gentle eyelid massage. I think that's enough information for this video, but if you found this video helpful, Please give us a like and subscribe for more updates. And if you're in the Los Angeles, Orange County, or Inland Empire area and would like an eye exam, visit our website or give us a call to set up an appointment today. And if you made it to the end of this video, that means you are motivated and taking good care of your eyes. If you want to learn more about some of the natural ways you can prevent glaucoma, you can watch this video here to learn more. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Puente Hills Eye Care. See you next time.